Hello. In this video, we'll be going over the initial setup for Codasys. So I have assumed that if you're watching this video, you've already installed Codasys. If you haven't, please go watch that video and install the Codasys development environment on your uh, host or Windows machine in my case. Um, so what we'll be doing here is, is doing the setup um, grabbing something called device descriptions, which tell Codasys the device it needs to build the code for. And we'll also be adding in some libraries and things that you'll most likely need to get started. So we are here at the cross control support site. Um, so just starting from the main page here, um, we're going to go product information. If you can't get in, I've talked about this on a lot of other videos, you need to request access to the support site. So um, enter in a username and password and access should be granted to you. Um, okay, so once we're here in product information, we're going to go software. <clears throat> and down here, we're going to see Codasys. Okay, so here we are going to grab two files. So Again, I'm assuming you've already downloaded the development environment and installed it in your Windows machine. So if you have, you know, you should uh, in 3S here have this Codasys um, version. So I'm using version 3.5 SP8. Uh, you may have 3.5 SP4 or, you know, whatever version you're using, it's, I, I believe, 3.5 SP4 and above is recommended. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open this right now anyway. Then we'll, while it's opening, we'll come back here. So at the support site, we're going to download... Oh. Okay, <laughs> back to the support site. So here we're going to download two things. We're going to go into device profiles, and we're going to download this. So we'll see that's downloading. And that's just called the Maxima Tech Development Environment Plugins.ProjectArchive. So in, in this might change or there might be uh, future versions of it. Um, so I'll try to, you know, we'll try to put that in the device profiles folder though. Um, and the next one we're going to download is this can and visualization components. So this will give you some can specific libraries and visualization specific libraries that you'll most likely need or want to use if you're using Codasys. Okay, so once both these have downloaded, they've, uh, for me, downloaded to my downloads folder here. So I'm going to come back to Codasys where I opened it before. And if you're just getting started with Codasys, you won't have any recent projects, but I am not just getting started, so I have some recent projects. Um, okay, so we want to extract these files now. So a project archive in Codasys is very useful. It, it not only saves your project, but it takes all of the libraries you're using in your project, the device descriptions, the options, and it compresses all of those together into what's called a project archive. And then you can extract that project archive and it gives uh, whoever is extracting it all of those libraries and things that they may not have had otherwise. So Codasys is a bit odd. There's a lot of libraries that do not come installed if you just install the, the Codasys development environment. That means that you may not have a lot of a lot of different libraries for can for visualization that you need, and um, so a project archive is a way to be able to pass those libraries from one person to another. So useful also for as you <clears throat> excuse me as you get started developing your own projects and maybe you want to share those with a coworker or a customer, um, being able to create a project archive, you know, is, is very useful as well. Okay, so we're going to come to file here and project archive. 
you can see if we had a, a project archive or had a project open, we could save or send. So essentially create a project archive. But in this case, we don't. So we are going to go ahead, though, and extract both of the archives we just downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and extract this one first. Um, I've already extracted these, but you know, I'll go ahead through it. That way you guys can see what it looks like. So I'm going to say open. Um, <clears throat> if you extract, if this is selected, I would you know, recommend you choose the folder you want to extract to. So for me, I've created a folder just called Codasys, and I'm going to actually extract it even further to a folder in there called Demo. Um, okay, so it's going to extract all the files to that folder. And after we're done extracting this, it actually, what it'll do is it'll give us all the libraries and device descriptions and install those in the Codasys program folders so we can go ahead and delete these files after we're done extracting we won't really need them anymore um, okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure everything's selected hit extract so for me it's it's telling me that this already exists because like I said I've done it before um, but I'll just hit yes I want to overwrite so you guys probably won't get that message if you haven't done this before. So it's going to go ahead and uh, extract everything. So in this, um, this may pop up. And what it's asking is it's, it's saying that there's libraries here that are uh, in this project. And there's a, a later version available. So you could update if you wanted to. But I would recommend not updating. So the versioning in Codasys of the libraries you use is pretty important for being able to run it um, on the displays without running into issues. So I would recommend when you don't when you extract these archives or open a project, make sure it's set to do not update. Um, okay, so and, and you know that goes with the compiler version and all that stuff. So we're going to just go ahead and hit OK. And essentially, this project is not a demo or anything. Like I said, it just is meant to give you the libraries and device descriptions and things that you'll need to actually create your own projects, which we'll be doing in the next videos. So after we've uh, extracted that, we can actually just come to File and hit close project so we'll no longer be using it and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing um, come to project archive again extract archive and this time we're going to select the can and visualization components um, and again just I would just select everything here uh, make sure that it's extracting to the folder that you want and then hit extract uh, so it's telling me the same thing. Um, it's just saying the, the file already exists. So I'm going to hit yes. And we'll give it a second here as it's extracting. So, so this, I, I created this, uh, project archive to provide some, the correct can versions for both J1939 and can open. Uh, also, it gives you the most up to date CC aux libraries and things like that. So this will give you essentially some libraries that are useful in more common things that you're going to do with the display. So we'll go over these things in future videos, but um, you don't need to know much about what it's doing. Uh, let's see, what does it say? So I'm going to just say apply this to all things. It's, it's asking me again. It's saying the files and libraries are already included because I've extracted all these before. Um, so I just told it to override everything. And again, set to do not update. So that's good. Um, you know, uh, yep. Yeah.
I think we're good. So we'll hit OK. And that is it. So this project actually will be in the in future videos and examples. We'll be kind of building this project again from scratch. So you can see how we've added a CAN bus and we have a J1939 CAN bus here, um, a CAN open CAN bus, a visualization. Um, but we'll be building this up again from scratch so you can see how to do each piece of it. But you could, if you wanted, use this as a base. Um, also note that the this uh, specific project archive was made when we had version 3542 running on the displays. So this is the version of Codasys we have running on the displays. In future videos, or uh, as time goes by, we will be updating the runtime. So I'll try to update this example or project archive with the latest uh, runtime updates and, and device descriptions there as well. But we'll be always updating the two device descriptions that you downloaded here. So as we release updated runtimes, we'll update them here and here. So if you're using a, um, if you're using one of our latest runtimes, for instance, or you want to update from a previous runtime, you may have to come back and re-download this and re-extract it to get the latest device description files. So we'll be talking more about libraries and device description files in future videos. Um, for now, I think that does it for this one. We've given ourselves the libraries and device descriptions we need to start. And in the next video, we'll show how to start creating a basic application. And as a last note, this is a one-time process. So uh, this whole video about the basic setup, you only need to do this once after you have installed Codasys for the first time. Or if you, as I mentioned before, want to update your device description because the runtime on your device is updating, you'll need to re-extract the project archive. But um, outside of updating or acquiring a library that you don't have, um, you don't need to do this again. So you'll be able to then follow the next videos as far as creating new projects and things. Uh, you won't need to come back and, and redo the steps in this video every time you create a project, for instance. All right. Um, thanks for watching and tune into the other videos.